Welcome music lovers. Today, we delve into the captivating life and haunting demise of Del Shannon, a pioneer of the rock and roll era. Rising to fame in the early 1960s with his iconic hit, Runaway, characterized by its unforgettable keyboard riff and emotive vocals. So let's dive in. Del Shannon born Charles Whedon Westover on December 30, 1934 in Coopersville, Michigan, United States, to parents Bert and Leon Mosha Westover. Shannon hailed from a rural farming community near Grand Rapids, where he was raised as the eldest among three siblings. Immersed in country and western music from a young age, he drew inspiration from artists like Hank Williams, Hank Snow, and Lefty Frizzell, as well as the Ink Spots. Shannon's musical journey began with a $5 acoustic guitar, leading him to entertain as the water boy at high school football games. Despite his small stature, Shannon's passion for music burned brightly. His early experiences with heartbreak and rejection would later shape his songwriting, reflecting his deep emotional resonance with life's trials and tribulations. Drafted into the army in 1954, he found himself stationed in Germany where he joined the Cool Flames as a guitarist. After completing his service, he settled back in Battle Creek, Michigan, juggling jobs as a carpet salesman and a truck driver. In his spare time, he played rhythm guitar for the Moonlight Ramblers at the High Low Club, led by singer Doug DeMott. In 1958, when DeMott was dismissed for drunkenness, Shannon stepped up as the new leader and vocalist, adopting the name Charlie Johnson and renaming the group The Big Little Show Band. By early 1959, he recruited keyboardist Max Crook, who played a unique instrument called a musitron, his own version of the clavioline synthesizer. Crook's recordings caught the attention of Ann Arbor DJ Ollie McLaughlin, who introduced the band to Harry Balk and Irving Mykonek of talent artists in Detroit. Shannon and Crook signed with Big Top Records in July 1960, with Balk suggesting the name, Del Shannon, combining Mark Shannon and, Del, from his beloved Cadillac Coupe de Ville. The newly christened Del Shannon, was promptly flown to New York City to record his debut single with Balk overseeing the session. Despite a promising string arrangement by Bill Rammel, Shannon's nerves got the best of him, leading to a failed recording session and Shannon feeling despondent. Prompted by McLaughlin, Shannon and Crook decided to rewrite and re-record an earlier song titled, Little Runaway, featuring Crook's Musitron as the lead instrument. The revamped version, titled, Runaway, was recorded on January 21, 1961, and released as a single in February, skyrocketing to number one on the Billboard chart by April. Following the hit, Shannon released, Hats Off to Larry, reaching number five on the Billboard chart and number two on the Cashbox chart in 1961 along with the lesser-known, So Long, Baby, reflecting themes of breakup bitterness. Runaway, and, Hats Off to Larry, were both recorded in a single day. Hats Off to Larry, emerged from a creative session in the Paramount dressing room, where Bobby V and Dion influenced Shannon's style, leading to a transformation with a new hairstyle and Italian suits. However, by August 1963, Shannon's ties with his managers and Big Top had deteriorated, Consequently, he established his own label, Billy Records, paying homage to his parents. Returning to the charts swiftly, Del Shannon scored hits with covers like, Handy Man, and, Do You Wanna Dance, alongside originals such as, Keep Searchin', and, Stranger in Town. In 1964, he produced a demo session for fellow Michigander Bob Seeger, later facilitating Seeger's rise to fame. Shannon also paid tribute to Hank Williams with the album Del Shannon Sings Hank Williams in late 1964 featuring hardcore country honky-tonk style. He shared the stage with Ike and Tina Turner at Dave Hull's Hullabaloo Club in Los Angeles on December 22, 1965. In 1966, Del Shannon signed with Liberty Records and covered Tony Fisher's The Big Hurt and The Rolling Stones' Under My Thumb. His song, I Go To Pieces, was released by Peter and Gordon in 1965. Shannon's album The Further Adventures of Charles Westover was recorded in September 1967, earning critical acclaim despite poor sales. Singles like, Thinking It Over, and, Gemini, followed in 1968. His final Liberty single, a cover of D. Clark's, Raindrops, marked the end of a commercially tough period. In 1972, he joined United Artists and released Live in England in June 1973, praised for its authenticity. Shannon signed with Island Records in April 1975. Bug Music, founded in 1975 to manage his songs, grew to include 250,000 compositions by 2011. A 1976 Roxy Theatre concert showcased Shannon's timeless rock and roll style, blending new hits with classics like Endless Sleep and The Big Hurt, described by the Los Angeles Times as haunting and deeply resonant. Shannon, while battling alcoholism, devoted much of his energy to producing other artists, including Smith and Brian Hyland, known for Gypsy Woman. 
Despite his popularity on the oldies circuit, particularly in Europe, Shannon's career slowed down significantly in the 1970s. Sessions with Jeff Lynne and Dave Edmonds didn't yield much success. In 1978, he stopped drinking and began work on Sea of Love, released in 1982 on his album Drop Down and Get Me, produced by Tom Petty. The LP, recorded over two years, included originals and covers, marking Shannon's return to the top 40 after eight years. In February 1982, Shannon graced the stage at the bottom line, delivering a mix of pop rock tunes and old hits. Reviewed by Stephen Holden of the New York Times, Shannon's performance showcased an easygoing pop country style. Songs like, Run Away, and, Keep Searchin', revealed Shannon's keen falsetto playing off against airy organ obligados. However, by the 1980s, Shannon's performances leaned towards, competent but mundane country rock. Shannon experienced a resurgence in popularity when he re-recorded, Runaway, with new lyrics as the theme for the NBC TV program Crime Story. In 1988, he collaborated with the Smithereens on their album Green Thoughts, singing, The World We Know. He joined forces with Jeff Lynne and Tom Petty once again in 1988 and 89 for a creative effort to be titled, Rock On. There were even rumors circulating that he might join the Traveling Wilburys after the passing of Roy Orbison, before his own untimely passing. Personally, Del Shannon was married twice in his lifetime. His first marriage was to Shirley Nash, a local Michigan resident from a large family. They first met at the Coopersville Theater while watching a film with friends. Together, they had three children, a son named Craig and two daughters named Kim and Jody. Tragically, Jody passed away at a young age from a rare form of cancer, inspiring Shannon to write the song, Jody. After 30 years of marriage, Shannon and Shirley drifted apart and eventually divorced. He later remarried Bonnie Leanne Tyson in 1986. In January 1990, Del Shannon was working on a new album and preparing for upcoming concerts, but faced increasing stress. Following his doctor's advice, he started taking Prozac, an antidepressant, on January 24. However, just 15 days later, on February 8, 1990, Shannon tragically died by suicide, using a .22 caliber rifle at his home in Santa Clarita, California. His widow noted significant changes in his behavior shortly after starting Prozac, including severe insomnia and fatigue, chills, racing heart, dry mouth, and upset stomach. Despite the absence of a note, she emphasized that suicide was completely out of character for him. She later filed a lawsuit against Eli Lilly, the manufacturer of Prozac, though the suit was eventually dropped. Shannon was later cremated, and his ashes were scattered. In tribute, the traveling Wilburys recorded a version of, Runaway, after his death. Jeff Lynne also co-produced Shannon's posthumous album, Rock On, released in 1991. Shannon's contributions were recognized with his induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1999 and the Michigan Rock and Roll Legends Hall of Fame in 2005. And there you have it. As we conclude our journey through the life of Del Shannon, his enduring legacy continues to echo through the halls of rock and roll history. Though his life ended tragically, his music leaves an indelible mark on the world. Thank you for watching, like and subscribe, take care and bye for now.